Okay. So right now, hopefully you can see, I have hooked in this guy in the back corner. Um, actually, let me try and, um, I don't think you can see that very well from here. So I'm gonna try, you can kind of see this from this angle, you can see a little bit, but not very well because this is blocking. So I'm gonna try and readjust camera one here, or camera two here, a little bit tighter in shots so that you can see that a little better. All right, it's a bit dark in that corner, but uh, try and put a little light in it. Um, so I will try, maybe put a little extra light from this angle. How's that sound? So if you can see down in here, of course I would never do this with a screwdriver with, with it powered, but I have no power. So I've got pin one, or pin two, I'm sorry, and pin eight hooked in with the heaters. And then the output wire is gonna come from here. I'm gonna connect that into a capacitor and a few other things. This is gonna go to ground. That's the center of the tap of the transformer. will come over here to my ground over here. And uh, then I'm gonna hook these guys up to the, uh, so this is two, it'll be four and six, these two here. And I'll bring that kind of the same path and probably wrap it around this side just to try and keep it away from the, the output tubes as much as possible. So I'll get that done next and uh, show you again, this wire is gonna to go to ground over here, etc. So we'll keep you, keep that going. All right, just gonna show a little close up here. Of course I had to fall off right after I got it set up. Um, so the, I'm gonna to connect to that pin with this. You can see that I got the pin connected there. And what I'm gonna to do to test is I'm first gonna kind of touch some of the bare metal. There's very little here. I have continuity. I'm also gonna to touch this. These are the other leads of the uh, output transformer that would go to the tubes. That means that that also, their, their center tap, which I don't know if you can see it very well, comes across here into this group. I've got it shielded so that this exposed soldered connection is not touchable. I also put a small amount of shielding over this capacitor so it can't touch with high power anywhere. Uh, it is grounding and the grounding wires are bare, but ground if you touch a ground to a ground, that should be fine. Anywhere on the chassis is ground also, so anything that touches the chassis is also grounding out. So that's kind of your protection of the circuit and why we put this green wire down to ground as well so we get a nice earth protection. Um, additionally, I now have, so I have all of those connected and I've got the ground connected. I have this extra cap. This is the main filtering cap. This one will kind of be able to shift over and hook in once I drop the the main, uh, sorry, I'll pull that off now. Once I connect and drop the board in here, but I won't be doing that until I've actually finished doing some of the work. So I have to finish doing my heaters, for example, these guys, the green ones. I have to finish doing, I might need to zoom out a little bit. Let's zoom out a little. So I'm gonna have to finish, I'll do the heaters last, but I have to wire, now that I've got the power up to this, these two will come over and hook to two of the pins on these two parts of the power tubes. And, the, and then I'll just jumper those over to the other outside power tubes. That way, if for some reason, uh, I have it, although I don't think there's no negative feedback in this. If you have a negative feedback set up in an amp, and I don't think the Vox does, if I remember right, then you may need to swap these output transformers when you first plug it in if it squeals, because that means the negative feedback is accidentally wired backwards and is a positive feedback, and therefore you're getting uh, oscillation. So you just swap these two. So effectively you, you hook these up to these two and if something would go wrong, you would just swap the direction of the leads, but I'm pretty sure that's not. Then I will also kind of bend this guy down and wire up um, the negative to the negative of this uh, one here. And then I will run a small jumper from here to the positive side. And then I will connect each of these three to the correct, you know, appropriate one of this as well. And once those are all done, and I will try to kind of probably go somewhat like this. Um, so that I can go like this and then lay these guys carefully around like that so that there's room for it to drop down and it will keep it kind of away. So then the final step will be to drop the board in to connect this into the, the, H, the B plus section of the B point as well as this capacitor. So what I might do is kind of connect this to there and then run a small jumper from, from there over, but I'm not sure. I actually may be close because I've got, I think the other input connection is right here. So we'll, uh, Keep it going, it's moving along. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I've got that all wired up. I'm gonna actually disconnect these, pull it over here so it's gonna be easier for me to do my heater wiring. And then I'll do the heater wiring across to the end. Once that's done, I can re replace those, but I want the heater wiring to have its own room and not be fighting these guys trying to get around it. And then I can kind of drop those back in again. So I'll get the heater wiring. As you can see, I've got 
Uh, I looked it up and Haybower shows that yellow is, is the 4, green is the 8, and orange is the 16 ohm. So I'll be able to switch between those impedances. And there's the output jack. So, um, But I'll now pull these out of the way and kind of flop them out of the way over here until I get my heater wiring in. Then I can put those back. And at that point, I'll be able to run these guys into pin 7 of the inner 2. And then I'll jump over to pin 7 of the outer 2. And the I think at that point, the only thing I have left is to do the input jacks. Hook those up to the... Um, their respective uh, tubes, and then from there I can drop my my uh, board back in and start wiring things up. And we're getting very close at this point, so there you have it. All right, so all done with the input jacks. I'm not sure how super clear that will be, but uh, I might get an op op opposite angle of this as well from the back side over here. But uh, they're all wired in, ready to go, and. Uh, Next is going to be doing the heaters, but uh, I'll try and do a quick switch around. I'll move the camera over and let you guys see what that looks like. Give me a second. All right. So hopefully you can see that. We've got my 268K resistors. I've got a grounding wire coming off the shielding of the shielded cable up back to the same ground up here as well. Going over to input tube two. This is one, two, three, and then four. So four is the... Um, this is the EF86, and this will be just one of the preamp uh, 12AX7s for the oscillation, for the tremolo and whatnot. So those are the two inputs. Those are wired in now. Now I'm going to do the heaters and bring those across. And as you can see, I also have those loose, like I said I was going to have. So next. All right, so got quite a few things done today. One, heater wires. You can see this was the biggest nightmare is getting these wrapped around and in. I'm hoping those won't induce noise into the power tubes, although I've heard they're the least likely to get noise. But uh, getting that around that corner and in with these big fat wires was a pain in the butt. But uh, I wound up some heavier gauge wire. Yeah, I have, I think it's 18, and then I have 22. So I normally do 18 on power, and then I'll go 22 on down, but I, I just wasn't paying attention. I wound up a whole lot. I even have a little leftover of the... 18 gauge, but I wound that all the way down to here and then I went to the 22 gauge. 22 gauge is a lot easier to run once you get to this point because it's so thin. Uh, and then finally I've got my 200 ohm resistors to ground that come up and I just gave it a soldered ground and I kind of wired it into the connection that's directly to this uh, preamp tube. I don't know if that is the wisest route for that, but it's uh, what I've done. So if anybody has any suggestions or bad, uh, points about why that might be bad, please let me know. But I am grounding my, you know, this is my hum balancing center, uh, artificial center tap for my heaters. Uh, the other thing is, is this black and white wire is also t attached in here. That'll go to my LED. I've got a small, I think it's a 330 ohm resistor on that. Um, it's a 1.7 volt drop LED, 20 milliamps. So I, I did a calculator on Hoffman's website. It says that I'm going to be only at about 14 milliamps. So I'm definitely below the current rating with that. So we should be good to go there. And uh, then as you can see, I've hooked in my two inputs and I've got my jacks. I think I showed that a minute ago. So all this is ready to now pretty much uh, hopefully I can drop things right in. So the first, the one other thing I'm going to do before I finish that is I'm going to wire these guys up to the pins of the center two, and then I'll jump her over to the pins of the other. I think it's pin seven. So I'll get that done, and then I'm going to call it good for the day, and I'll be ready to drop the board in and get going from there. All right, well, there's the board in place. I'm um, definitely going to be fighting some clearance and issues trying to get to go in, but... Uh, Hopefully it will not be too nightmarishly hard, but I'm going to stop there for the night. I just wanted to let you see I've got everything in place. I did connect in my uh, power lines here, and uh, this all is sitting in there just very tight. So getting this bolted down might be a little bit of a battle, but I'll leave that alone for tonight. But I'll, uh, you can see that's what it'll kind of look like once it's in. Very tight chassis. This one also I'm going to have to carefully kind of bend back because it hooks into this, uh, this B plus position here. That's where B is, and then this is C, D, and then E down at that end. So... Uh, and those are the different positions of the power filtering. But uh, as you can see, I'm getting very close. Hopefully just another couple more hours, I'll have this all seated in place, and then I can start connecting it in. And, uh, you know, all I have to do effectively is kind of carefully, like, th th run one of these wires each over to the different points of the power tubes. You know, run these ones over to... Uh, let's see, these are the power. This, these yellow ones are going to be the, the grids, the black ones are the ground. So those are all for the power tubes through up to about here i believe and then starting from here this will be the tighter one i have to bend these guys over and hook start hooking them into this one if i understand or if i remember correctly so that is when things are going to start getting a bit tight but hopefully i will be able to get those over there so 
Um, but uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. If for some reason I do end up being a little short, I may have to um, carefully desolder and pull them out and do it again. But uh, that's why you try to get a general guess of how far you'll have to be. But that guy is uh, is going to be reaching over to here, I believe, with the phase inverter. So that is a bit of a stretch. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll show you as I complete.